Uh, once again, my name is Aaron. Uh, if you guys don't know me, uh, hello, welcome to camp. Thanks for coming. We wouldn't have a job without you guys, so appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Camp's almost over. Boo-hoo, sad, happy, I don't know, somewhere in the middle maybe. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for coming. Today, most of the classes that I normally teach kind of have a general overarching theme where kind of I start, I'll start off with a sort of a technique and then we'll sort of move forward and elaborate uh, that technique based upon things that happen to you or counters, things of that nature, very linear type of thing. This class here is something that I kind of wanted to do for a while, but maybe it didn't get voted or maybe I didn't always put it up for, for the voting, but this is basically a collection of techniques and things that I found uh, coming up over the years that have kind of leveled the playing field and kept me in the game maybe at times where I was outmatched maybe in a certain position or I was outmatched skill level or I was maybe, so, yeah, I mean, just one of those things where maybe somebody's just really, really good and I felt like I was lost or I got caught in certain things and I didn't know how to get out, uh, which, which happens to everybody at every belt level. So basically that's what this class is, is sort of like things where you can help level the, maybe a skill disparity, a discrepancy or uh, keep you in the game longer against somebody who may be better than you. And everybody here has experiences as well. So if, if you have anything that you want to add as we get forward or any experience, please, please let me know. I'm happy to hear, hear, hear what you guys think. Some of these things, there's, you know, you have white belts all the way up to brown, black belt. Some of these things might be things you've seen before or, or general concepts. This is an all levels class. So there's going to be I'm sure a couple things you haven't seen before and some things maybe you have. So just, just be patient. We're going to try to get through it. And these are not super, all these things are not super complicated things. So we should be able to move through a number of them and give you guys some, some tools. And if you even just take a couple of them away and your game is better, you're better for it. And uh, once again, like I always like to say in uh, preface this, I'm, I really am passionate about being here and helping you guys learn. I'm not here just to teach a class and, See you guys later, see it, you know, the whatever, at the party or whatever it is. I really want to make sure that you take something away from my class, that your time, you guys, your time is valuable. You guys obviously paid money to be here. I want to make sure that you take something away from that, and that's important to me. So before you leave, if there's any questions or anything, I want to make sure that you, you, you got your value by coming here, basically is what I'm saying. Um, so the first thing that we'll talk about is um, I, I, I started my jiu-jitsu career in Japan and I trained there for 13 years and there was a lot of, maybe un, not unlike any other places, but there was a lot of very, very good dynamic guard players. And maybe if I was passing guard, guys had amazing spider guards and amazing De La Hiva guards and you know, obviously as Baron Bolo and all these things started to progress uh, all these very dynamic guard play things, maybe you just get lost. Maybe they're better than you. Maybe uh, these type of things are just, maybe they're wearing you out. A lot of times I had a guy that was super strong. He would, his spider guard, he was just so strong. My back and neck would get tired. I kept trying to posture him. So one thing that I really, not, I mean, I still do it now. If, if, if I get tired or if I'm in a situation where I feel that maybe I'm outmatched or something like that, is forcing half guard. Forcing half guard um, and passing on your knees takes away a lot of variables from modern guards. No gi, especially a lot of people are entering the legs. If you're standing, you're an easy target a lot of times for people uh, entering the legs, especially maybe if you're not at the same skill level as them. So one of the first things that we're gonna do is to, this is, once again, I said sort of a basic thing, this is not complicated. We're gonna start increasing that, but is uh, forcing half guard when you get tired or you feel like you're about to get done up by somebody's guard, you're about to get messed up. So somebody would like to assist, maybe Carol. Any, just... So if we're in a, you know, so if we're, we're, in, we're in a passing situation, one concept that I like to do, maybe he's got a spider guard or just grab something, whatever it is. If I can get a situation where I can get down and sit on top of this leg, maybe I feel that he's a big guy, he's stronger than me, he's more skilled than me, whatever it is, I'm tired, something. If I can get down 
and sit on this bottom leg, it's going to be hard for them to get a lot of offense going. It's, it, some of these techniques here are not necessarily solving the problems completely, but buy you time. Maybe allow you to rest for a moment until you can maybe get more advantageous grips and things like that. So I just want you to, once again, this is a super basic one. Let's sit down on this half guard. And now once the person does that, I want you to like continue to try to Try to keep that leg, keeping that leg, that bottom guard player always wants to pull that leg up. If you can sit down on it and keep it pinched in between your leg, it'll inhibit their ability to sweep you and attack you. Basic thing, I think everybody understands it, we'll start moving forward. Any questions about that so far? Force half, sit down on top of it, and just try to keep them lightly. Give it a good bite. A lot of people want to pull this leg out. Especially you guys that have a lot of dynamic guards, they want this out. So if I can sit down on it and buy myself time, maybe I get 10 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe I get the energy again, I can get back up and start passing. Give it a shot, one, two, three. It can be from any setup. It doesn't matter what the guard is on top specifically. Did, did, did anybody feel you were able to slow them down a little bit more by just forcing that down? Not, not a super complicated thing, but something that will buy you time. Especially if a really good a, a spider guard player or somebody is starting to whip you around and you start feeling lost, if you can force that down into the, into the half guard, it'll, it'll buy you some time. Now the next uh, segment, and again, not, not a, a very um, complicated thing, but some people might not know, they don't. And I'm going to show those bottom and tops, but the first thing, so we're in half guard. What do most half guard people want to do? What type of guards do they want to do? Knee Either the knee but generally what, with, the, with the hand and things, what are they going to do? They either want your collar or they want to come up and underhook you. Most of, the, most of the time, these are the initiations for a lot of the guards. Agree? Yes. If you're in a situation where you feel that the person, um, yeah, they're getting the better of you, they're starting to initiate offense on you. One thing that I, I like to use, and I even use it now, this top hand is, does the majority of the work on the guard. Of course, if they're looking to dive under and, and, and go to, you know, a deep half or something, that's a little bit different sort of thing, but most of the other guards, knee shield, um, playing you know, the underhook game. This is the, the linchpin that they want. They want this hand under you, attached to you, something. If I grab this and I just, I'm here, just hold on to this hand. Literally, is all you have to do is hold on to hand. So let's try to start attracting, trying to attack you. Controlling that top hand solves a lot of the offensive attacks that they're going to put against you. So if you're, if you're in a situation, they're trying to work, maybe they got the underhook and you were able to back out. Maybe they keep putting their hand in their collar and you feel like they're going to start doing something, whether it's some, some sort of a sweep or loop chokes, things of that nature. Just latch onto this top hand and hang out. If, if, if they keep spinning it and breaking your grip, also, no gi, same thing. You can just do a baseball back grip if that's what you want to do. If they keep trying to circle it around, I'll just put two on one. Maybe one here, grab the wrist, and I'm just buying time. Now, once I maybe a lot of people sometimes will start to get desperate, start to yank the hand, start to move it around, and that might give you an opportunity to then start to initiate the pass. Or maybe you want to stand up and pass that way. Now you have a, a good grip, a good control grip already on them. They can't follow you up into a single or something like that. If he comes up, you stand up, and you can work to start passing him using that grip. But the main point, which is the over big thing, is we're stalling their offense. 
and it's allowing you to stay in the game. Maybe you prevent a sweep. Maybe you get your little energy bar back up a little bit and you have more energy to reinitiate. So not very complicated. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions about that before I let you just try to practice that a little bit? Yes? Would you still try and grab his arm or would you want to be rid of the grip first? Does it make a huge difference? I didn't hear the first part. If he has a cross grip on me? Like if his left arm was grabbing your left from the top, from yeah. the half guard position where Obviously you were. That, that's a bit of a problem. And that's actually going to be the next part, but on the bottom side of it, which is kind of what you want to do when somebody's really good at passing you. So if he has, if he has a cross grip like this, I can if I can break it off and control it, generally this is going to be a problem if he starts either opening me up a lot or pulling me across and it, yeah, it's starting to load me up and move me around. But if I can, if I can keep my base back and if, if I get a two-on-one, I can usually break it. But um, yes, if he starts pulling me and stretching me out, I'm set, right now I'm, I'm set up for yeah things like this. Maybe he can get that leg out. So, so, so yes, you, you want to. If you have a two-on-one, you can usually deal with that. But let's just try to practice that. Have them put it on you and try to strip that off and then see. And the per person on the bottom, we're not going very hard, but just try to initiate some sort of an offense while they have that grip. Be, be mindful if you're, if you're trying to break the grip off at everybody's fingers here. We're, we're just practicing. We're not in a tournament or anything, so just be mindful. If you keep trying to strip it that way, try to strip it maybe gently or break it off a little bit more cleaner. Any questions? One, two, three. These, uh, these guys asked back here, guys, be mindful. If we're grabbing the hand and they start getting away or moving or sliding out, we're not gonna just sit there. Or, I mean, this is, we're not just fixated on this. Just like in a situation where we're going to follow. So if, if he starts moving his body out, I'm going to stay with him. I want to have attachment. It's no different than if I'm in the closed guard and he moves his hips way out to the side like he's going to start attacking me. You want to follow. It's the same idea. I want to stay squared up with them and I want to have some attachment. So if the, if the hand, if they're moving, you're not just going to sit there with that. That's... Well, we're talking about using that hand to just slow them down from attacking. If they start moving away, of course, you have to stay with them. You're not just going to follow them with a hand around. You know what I'm saying? You, don't want to, you still don't want them to get out. Half guard is, is a strong passing position, so don't get just fo focused on that. We kind of have to do a couple of things at once, but the main part of this is just showing you that grip to stop immediate offense. And if they start to get out, then, of course, you, you, you're not going to sit there forever. It's a pit stop. Make sense, everybody? Um, now, we're going to just talk about this one briefly. The same thing sort of works. What am I doing with my phone from here? The same thing sort of works the same way from top to bottom. So, if being able to cross grip people, he's, he wants to come in. What do most people want to do with this hand? Yeah. So, if we're able to just, same thing, we feel like we're in trouble. Maybe he's pulling on my head and doing weird stuff. If I can, if I can stop this, and, and hold this hand, it's the same thing. We can slow down offense. So he's trying to cross face me, two different things. I'm slowing, I'm controlling this far arm. He's trying to. He wants to get in on my lapels with this hand. He wants to get in on my head. And maybe I'm like, oh shit, he's getting strong. He's, he's suffering, he's giving me trouble. Okay, but yeah, maybe you lose it. Maybe you have to re-engage it. So that cross grip on the bottom, it works just like that other grip on the top. Now let's, let's try it. The same thing we just did, just a quick little thing, and we're going to move on to a little bit more bigger concept situation. So bottom person, work on getting that cross grip. Maybe a two-on-one if you need it, if they're bigger and stronger. Top person, just try to loosely initiate offense. We're not going to try to buzz all the guys. This is just for the sake of understanding what's happening. Make sense? One, two, three. Is everybody understanding kind of what's happening here?
These, these techniques are not, we're just going to keep them forever. They're buying you time until you can either see an opening that you think might work for you, uh, regain a little bit of energy. It's just stopping from immediate threats. Does everybody grasp that, that sort of thing? Has anybody have any, does anybody have any questions so far about the stuff that we've seen? Does it make pretty good sense? Uh, this one especially, this cross grip, just to give you a byproduct. I play this a lot from all of them. Maybe some of you folks, that I, I taught like a couple of scissor sweep classes, maybe you people, but I really love this cross grip in this pull here. And I'll start to use sweeps and things off of this. So it kind of, it's twofold. It, it really enables me to stop offense from him and it, it allows me to initiate my own. And it, especially when, if you get it crossed over and things, they, they really want to square up to you because they're very vulnerable here. An another thing, maybe no gi, you, maybe you do no gi, maybe you can't do a cross grip or maybe is, um, is using like these paws. And, and this works almost in any situation where half guard, bottom side control, anytime somebody starts controlling your face, it's harder, it's more shit you're gonna deal with, right? It sucks, it's, it's more work. So anytime that you can stop that sort of stuff and essentially you're controlling the inside space. So if I can, if I can and maybe in a no gi variation, if he's trying to get on my face and I'm, I'm using this, paw or single paw grip to kind of ride him out so he can't get on you. And this is essentially maybe if you try to do the hand and they keep circling, maybe just use like these little sloth hands, mantis hands, whatever you, for you kung fu people, I don't know. So just using this to try to control that space. So that's just another little variation for you to think about. Now, whoever gets stuck in closed, has anybody ever got stuck in closed guard and they just can't get out? Does that still happen to anybody? Yeah, some people just have a good closed guard. Point one, if you want to slow people down, put them in closed guard because it does work, right? If you can, I know it's hard to get some people in that. We're not going to go over that, but just as a point, closed guard, the legs are strong, more shit for them to open. If you can get somebody in closed guard, it buys you some time. And if you have a good closed guard, then maybe you can do some attacks. But if you're somebody that gets stuck in closed guard, um, here's one. I, I, I actually I taught this to a guy, a Dutch guy a long time ago. I think he's a black belt now in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, he's like, man, I, I did this in a couple tournaments and I was, uh, it worked for me really, really awesome. I think he was a purple belt then. But uh, it's basically like a very easy, quick opening for close guard. And this has really served me well against good guys because even people who are good still kind of fall for the bait because what you're going to see here. I really like... Um, Personally, everybody has it a little bit different way, but I really like this like double, this double control here. Um, I can, it really is good for, for keeping my elbows, for he's, if he tries to attack me, I can use these as like rudders to keep my, overarching thing in a lot of things is don't allow somebody to get inside of you, right? If they're inside, they're controlling the space in most techniques. So if I'm using this to stay inside. If he starts getting underneath me or, it, it's, it's different. Now he can start attacking, right? Right. So I'm using this here. I want to be up on my toes because it's easier for me to pop up. If I'm down here, it's more work for me to do. So simply, we have about, so everybody, we're not like this, thumbs on the outside. Or not necessarily on the outside, but the palms are going to face in. They're still facing in, but the, the, the top of the hand is up. Make sense? What do you see what I'm grabbing? <laughs> Jesus loves the little children. <laughs> We're here. We're on our hands, and he's, he's trying to attack. That's the move. So we're doing this, this thrust. We're doing a thrust choke, essentially. Hands here as we pop up. We're pushing here. And... 99.9 .9 times out of 100, the hands come to, to here, and I can start working the open. Mindful of two things. Well, one main thing. One, if he starts, if, if you stay there too long with the hands, yes. You don't want to do that. You're just using it as a diversion for them to, and by the time they're doing that, you're already up and open. Two, when you, if you, when you do get up, I pop. If I'm like this, my feet are 
perfectly even, what's he going to do? This, this, oh. Not yet. Okay, I'm just, this, this crap starts starting to happen. So we're here. Nice and control. He's trying to, he's trying to pummel underneath. Whatever it is, you can really use this. To... Now we can start to pass. So we'll just practice this pop up here. We're here. I'm going to do it slow for the sake of the technique. I'm on my toes because I can really spring up. If I'm like this, you can't really do it. You got to need to do this first. So we're here. Sometimes they open for you. Other times you might have to start doing normal opening type of things, but you're up and you're ahead of them at that point. Any questions? Anybody need to see it again? Has anybody never seen this before? Put your hand up if you've never seen this. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. One, two, three. That's a big guy. Just, just to recap, I, I still saw a couple of small mistakes. A couple things. We want the hands basically facing down, right? This is the grip. We're not, not the hands up and in, down. And that choke, if you, maybe I kind of went over the choke a little fast, is we're going over the other hand. One is pulling and one is pushing. We're creating like a, a bit of like a, like a necktie sort of thing. And your hand might, when you hit them, generally you might hit them like in the throat a little bit too. So it's a pretty quick, <coughs> and the hands will come up. So make sure that you have the grips correct, the hands or palms down. She had asked, what if I, you know, obviously I like to be on my feet because I can use pressure, I'm more mobile, but some people maybe have uh, toe injuries or ankle injuries and things of that nature, and, and they just like to have their feet down. Um, that's okay, but you're gonna need them to put them up in order to go. You, I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe depending, I could get up, but you're gonna have less spring power and able to get up to pass, you understand? So you wanna be up on your toes, it's gonna to make it easier. Even if it's just right before you do it, that's okay as well. Any questions about that so far? Was that working okay for you guys? One thing I don't want you to do though, is when you pop up, it's hanging out here. Look, look where I am. I mean, we only have a split second of surprise in order to get up and go. We don't want to be hanging out with our arms there. So immediately, I'm off and looking to pass. Makes sense before the hands come up and start messing with our hands. Understood? Now, another thing that happens in, uh, in closed guard, does anybody ever get stuck in an overhook? I'll show you. Guard players, wait on. Guard players are always looking to isolate arms. Arms are, you know, arm locks, shoulder locks, sweeps, um, different type of chokes. This is just not good. Omoplatas, triangles, all these things are easily, has anybody ever got stuck in one of these and not been able to get out? It kind of sucks. If people are good at it, if maybe they get your lapel, Maybe if they have really long arms, loosen it up a little bit. Sometimes people can kind of just limp arm out of it. That's not always an easy case. And you can get kind of halfway out and hurt your own elbow that way. You can kind of get it pinched. Um, one thing that I found that works really, really amazing for that, and I'm surprised a lot, most people don't know it, is if, if I have a really, really good overhook here, I call this kind of like the crowbar. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other arm, put it across his neck right here. Okay? Now I'm going to create a gable grip on this side and wedge it open. Now I've made space to get my arm out. So he's over the top of my arm. I don't want to be like really wide open. They can attack it nice across the neck, gable grip. Now I'm basically creating a wedge across his neck. Pulling, just try to keep the overhook. It'll pop it right off. You're creating a lot of pressure. Not only does it suck having their arm in, in your neck, but you're just kind of creating like a chicken wing sort of thing, and it's, it's hard on their arm and shoulder too. And pull it out. Again, we don't wanna, once we get it out, we don't wanna be staying here with our arms except for obvious reasons. So we're in an overhook. 
Maybe we're controlling, controlling, arm. Nice quick circle, and we're out. Yes? If he has a grip, he won't be able to keep it. You'll make enough space to, to wedge it out. You'll see. Get a good grip on Mickey. Yeah. You can pop it right out. Like it creates a lot of uh, uh, tension on the wrist. Everything. You're just, you're kind of like, uh, and it sucks having the elbow right in your neck too, right? So it works quite well. Any questions? Anybody need to see it again? See it again? No? One, two, three. Off you go. Yeah. How is this working for everyone? Pretty this good? Excellent. Excellent. Um, one thing I wanted to, I didn't maybe necessarily say it, is, is what people are asking, like, which hand? I like to have, um, yeah, the hand that's on the head high because I'm, I'm kind of putting a pressure down into that hand and then it's easier for me to, to do it. This hand you can do it, but I can't, now I'm, I'm not using this hand for any additional pressure, the bottom hand. So I want the, the hand that's under the arm on top. Now, this, you're, you're not necessarily pushing down so much with the elbow. This is just a lever for this here. And it, the byproduct of the lever is it's gonna put pressure in his neck. So we're here and we're trying to bring this arm upward. So if you look at it here, we're here, there's no space. Can anybody see any light through there? No. Now there's light and that's when you pull it up. But you wanna make sure you try to get it enough that way they don't reclamp you because there's a moment where they might be able to cinch it back down but you should be able, if you pry it open enough, you should be able to circle in and be ahead of them. Thanks. Any, any questions about that? Work pretty good. Uh, we just have a minute. I just wanted to say a couple of other things to just be mindful of um, in regards to staying in the game against people that are better than you. I didn't want to cover it today, but grip breaking, huge. People get their hand in their collar. People start manipulating you from uh, whether the grips are on your, your pants or something from passing or whether uh, they're in your collar or other th or lapels from their guard. Being able to break grips is very, very important to, at the highest levels, if you watch a lot of matches in the gi, it's, it's whoever can get the, the dominant grips first and initiate. So being able to keep those dominant grips off of you are, um, are very, very important to mitigating that they can go first. Or, if you, or vice versa, if you can get your grips, you can go first. So playing the grip game um, is critical. Uh, one other last little thing I'll sprinkle um, from the top position. A lot of people lose arm bars and things like that, you know, just holding it like this. If you can use Kimura grips, the Mendez brothers made it very, very um, uh, kind of popular. They would use Kimura grips when they step over to take arm bars. It's much more secure, and then you can use that. So little things, the more friction that you can place in certain positions will allow you to keep keep the, the submission or other things. So just try to experiment and uh, see, maybe you do things you didn't think of that kept you out of trouble, but just start, start thinking of the things that you do and how it affects people or vice versa. If you're on the bottom and somebody's doing something to you and you're like, I can't get started, think about those things. And then maybe try to use that same strategy maybe in a different position or something like that. So any, any other questions before we go? Did you guys learn something? I hope. I know we started off a little basic, but I wanted to kind of just layer it and, and, and see, um, just maybe try to make you think about things a little bit differently. So I appreciate you guys coming, and I will take a little photo, and then I think somebody else, I don't know who's up, but it's time. Thanks.